Sometimes you have to do something out of the ordinary. Sometimes you have to make a way out of no way. We have been too quiet for too long. There comes a time when you have to say something, when you have to make a little noise. When you have to move your feet. This is the time. Now is the time to get in the way. The time to act is now. We will be silent. No more. The time for silence is over. I've seen that so many times, and it's amazing every single time. That was seven years ago. Basil mentioned that moment when Congressman John Lewis, the civil rights icon, who was just 23 years old when he spoke at the March on Washington, let us sit in on the House floor over Republicans' refusal to hold a vote on, wait for it, gun safety legislation following the mass shooting, the massacre at Pulse nightclub in Orlando, Florida. Joining our conversation, one of the two expelled Tennessee Democratic lawmakers, Justin Jones. It's a privilege to get to talk to you. Thank you for making time for us. Thank you so much. We were we were covering um, the vote for your expulsion live, and we'd spoken to you the day before. We had some sense of what might be coming down. Um, but your, 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 your comments um, were prescient. Uh, you talked about the world watching. The world certainly was and is. And so we wanted to ask you what comes next. I think what comes next is really um, up to the speaker, um, Cameron Sexton, because what comes next is still the same demand for our children to live in a community where they don't have to live in fear of these mass shootings, of these weapons of war on our streets. Um, when I saw that video of John Lewis, it made me emotional because I was an intern in Washington when he led that sit in. I remember sitting outside the House, um, you know, sitting outside the Capitol building in D.C. until 2, 3 a.m., waiting for them to come out. I'm 27 years old now, the youngest, well, formerly was the youngest black lawmaker in Tennessee, and I just know that that good trouble is exactly what we were doing. And so thank you for playing that clip of Congressman John Lewis. Representative Gloria Johnson told us the day before the expulsion that HR came to see her and said that if she resigned, she could keep her health care and that if she was expelled, she would lose it. Did you get the same visit from HR? No, HR did not come to my office. Um, no one came to my office, so we didn't know the rules of how that hearing would go. We didn't understand the process. Um, it was it was a kangaroo court, and so it seemed like they were making up rules and decisions uh, moment by moment. So no one came to my office, um, and no one spoke to me until the day of our hearing about 30 minutes before. Can you tell our viewers what rights you do and don't have in the super minority in the Texas legislature and what in their view, Tennessee legislature, what, what in the Tennessee legislature you were not allowed to do? Because I think a lot of people are, are missing this piece that you were not allowed to give voice to your own constituents. That seems to most people like the most basic function of a representative in a state legislature. I mean, definitely. Um, again, I'm 27, and, and you often hear, if you want to do some, something, you can run for office. So I ran for office, was elected, and went into the legislature hoping I could voice these concerns for my district. You were shut down in committee. Um, you, they, don't, they don't call on you to speak on bills. They just call the question without any type of deliberation, because they have 75 members. We had 24. Now there's only 24, uh, 22 Democrats. I mean, it's a party, and it is a supermajority that is drunk with power. And the world saw yesterday, it's not a, there's no democracy in Tennessee. Our legislature is the opposite. It is autocracy, um, you know, and it should scare us all. Um, that day, you know, the day of our protest, in fact, that whole week, we tried to talk about the crisis of mass shootings um, following the massacre at Covenant, Elementary, at Covenant Elementary School. And rather than and let us talk, they shut us down. They turned off our microphones. When I went outside to just go stand in solidarity with the protesters, I came back in, and my voting machine was cut off, something that I had never seen on the House floor, because the speaker said you can't go in and out anymore, though he, that was never a rule enforced. Um, I mean, just the whole process was a mockery of democracy. And it's, it's really scary with yesterday's vote, the precedent that has been set for the nation and other states to follow. What do you think Republicans thought would happen? Do you think they thought you'd go quietly, we wouldn't notice that they expelled and disenfranchised your constituents? I mean, I think a lot of people were shocked about the hearing yesterday and shocked about what they, what they witnessed, but that was actually them tame. I mean, this is the normal type of arrogance of power that we see on full display every time I work in that building. And it's very hard being a young black man to work in a legislature where you have such 
political hubris and arrogance and condescension. I mean, I think they thought that no one, you know, they had ultimate authority and that no one would challenge them because they're so used to shutting down any voices of opposition. You see, they expelled us. They thought it would be over because it wasn't about us, though. It was about our movement, which is why we are still here, which is why the world is watching. Um, they've, instead of, you know, silencing the movement, they put a spotlight on Tennessee and the shame of our legislature that is so counter to democracy and that is a symbol for America of our deepest shame, um, which is trying to bring us back to 1963 instead of 2023. It is clear that the we were on the air when your vote was taking place, and shame is what the protesters assembled, and they were all ages. They were male and, and female. I'm sure many were your constituents, but they seemed to come from, from all over Tennessee. Um, it, it is clear that your position on gun safety legislation is the position of the majority of your state. What reforms are necessary for that, for that body to not be so broken that it doesn't even represent the people of Tennessee? I mean, we have a party that has hijacked our democratic process by rigged maps, voter suppression. In Tennessee, one in five black men can't vote because of felony disenfranchisement. I mean, we have a party that has is, that is stolen our democracy and so that the will of the voters is, 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 is erased in order to appeal to the NRA and the Tennessee Firearms Association. Just this week, in the aftermath of that mass shooting at Covenant, the Education Committee pushed forward a bill to, to allow teachers to carry guns in schools, though all the teachers who were there testified against it. I mean, this party is so arrogant, and it's being led by Speaker Cameron Sexton, who is an extremist and who's pushing this very harmful agenda, not just for us, but for the, our children and generations to come. Your colleague, just uh, former Representative Justin Pearson, talked about knowing people who'd lost their lives to, to gun violence. Uh, Gloria Johnson also talked about surviving a school shooting um, as a teacher. Um, your state is grieving. I believe when these protests erupted, all the funerals hadn't taken place for the six people, three nine-year-old children who'd been murdered in that school shooting. Was, was there ever any consideration from the Republicans there to join hands with the Democrats and propose anything that Tennesseans would like to see on, on the topic of gun safety legislation? Not at all. Their only proposals were to put our heads into the sand and, and ignore the issue. They, they proposed putting lo more locks on doors, more security. But these are not solutions to weapons of war on, in our streets. This is a uniquely American problem um, and in a state that is so obsessive and, and that almost worships gun culture. Um, our governor um, signed a, a slew of gun bills in a, in a, a gun factory. I mean, it's, it's just so... It's so scary, and we should all be alarmed at what's happening in Tennessee. We can't even talk. There's no opportunity to, to collaborate. Uh, the speaker um, intimidates members and tries to get us to just bow down and back down. And in, in committee, if you don't, your, your microphone's cut off. Um, you know, even before I was expelled, my, my ID badge was shut off. Um, I was kicked off my committees. I was shut out of the parking garage. I couldn't even park um, in the legislative parking garage anymore. Just petty things to try and silence voices of dissent. And it's very scary. And, and the nation saw exactly what we're dealing with in Tennessee. And if it can happen in Tennessee, the, the warning is, is that it can happen anywhere in America. Um, what, so Congresswoman Barbara Lee was on um, while your vote was taking place, and um, she became emotional when this vote to actually expel you had happened. Even though you were expecting it, what were your emotions at that moment? I mean, it didn't feel real, to be quite honest. I, I, we, we went through that hour-long hearing, and they asked all these questions, and they got to the vote, and it, you know, they took, they had the votes. It was completely partisan um, for the, you know, that's, that was historic in Tennessee history. And, you know, I hugged my colleagues, um, told them it was a pleasure to work with you all, because I, I have enjoyed work, um, my, my Democratic colleagues, I should say, you know, it was a pleasure to work with them. And I went to go take my nameplate off my desk, packed my bag, and I walked up to the gallery to go wait for my other two colleagues to let them know I'm in solidarity with them. But it was surreal because it's something that if I didn't know what was happening to me, I wouldn't know that we were in America anymore. Yeah, that's what it felt like watching. I saw you go and, and hug uh, Representative Gloria Johnson, um, and then uh, I saw the throngs of press waiting for you outside, and, and we were glad to, to hear your comments afterward. You, you started by saying that, that the speaker still has a lot of control about what happens next, but if, if the path is cleared legally and procedurally for you to return to the legislature, will you return? 
Definitely. I mean, there are 78,000 people in District 52, one of the most diverse districts in Tennessee, that don't have a voice right now. And I was elected because I, because I was going to fight for them, and I will continue to fight for them, whether I'm inside or outside the chamber. And so I definitely would come back. The question is if he'll seat me, but that will be another battle, because I believe that this decision yesterday was unconstitutional. I believe that if he, if he tries to refuse to seat me, it would be unconstitutional. Um, but we know that we have a, a supermajority that yesterday they just burned the state constitution. Uh, they they do, not, do not believe in our constitution, it seems like. They just believe that they have ultimate power and that any voice of opposition must be silenced. Um, and so we'll see what the speaker does. But what I can tell you is that they've lost an entire generation, that all these young people, the thousands who are gathered watching them, they have lost them, and that this party, that is, their power is temporary, that the speaker's time is, is coming to an end, um, and that these young people, when they turn out and vote, when they use their power, um, we will transform this state and, in doing so, transform this nation.